buck a buck a buck a buck a buck a <laughs> You know the deal. The next thing we're going to talk about in our measurement unit is the volume and surface area of pyramids and cones. And the first one we're going to talk about here is uh, the volume of a pyramid. Before we talk about the volume pyramid, we're going to just uh, review quickly how we get the volume of a cube. And the, a cube is just a rectangular prism. And uh, as, we talked in, uh, as we talked about in the video on uh, calculating the volume of rectangular prisms, uh, we do that just like any prism uh, by calculating the area of the base times the height. So if we have a cube uh, on the base, we have a square. And to calculate the area of a square, we do length times width. And that tells us how many square centimeters are on the bottom. And if we know how many square centimeters are on the bottom, we know how many cubic centimeters could fit on the bottom. Uh, and then we just have to multiply it by how many layers there are. And that's, that's the height, which is this line here. And on a cube, the length, the width, and the height are all the same. Well, it turns out there's a relationship between the volume of a pyramid. And I, I'm only talking about a square-based pyramid here, just like in the previous video where we talked about Pythagorean theorem on pyramids. We're only talking about square-based pyramids here. Uh, so the bottom of the pyramid is a, is a square. Well, if you had the same square on the bottom of this pyramid as on the bottom of this cube, uh, if you filled this pyramid with water, say, let's say you tipped it upside down from what it is here, and it was a, a little paper cup, and you went to fill this cube with the water, it would take you three times. Uh, to fill up the cube with uh, y using a cup the shape uh, of the pyramid. And again, as long as the bottom is the same size, the square has to have the same length and width on, on both of the shapes. So that being the case, uh, since the volume of our, our cube is area of the base times the height, so uh, area of the square, times the height, um, that's how we calculate the volume of uh, the, the cube. It's a, it's a prism, so that's how we cal calculate the volume of any prism and a cylinder as well, area of the base times the height. Uh, since there's three uh, values of the volume in, in this pyramid to, to fill up this cube, well, that would mean that the equation to calculate the volume of the pyramid would be you take the volume of the, the cube, which is area of the base times the height, and then you divide it by 3. And remember, the height is the height from the bottom to the top at a right angle. And the easiest way to measure that is from the center of the square uh, to the top of the pyramid, to the apex or the vertex at the top, at a right angle. And that's how you calculate the volume of a pyramid. So when we're trying to calculate the volume of a pyramid, we need to know two pieces of information. We need to know what the area of the base is, what the area of the square on the bottom is, and what the height is from the bottom to the top at a right angle. So this line here. We need to know how long that line is. And usually, uh, we're not given the area of the base, usually will be given the length of one of the sides. And if we're given the length of one of the sides, again, because it's a square-based pyramid, we know the, the length and the width. So for example, suppose the length of the side was 5 centimeters. And suppose you were given the height, so that side in there, uh, from the bottom to the top at a right angle, and suppose that's 10 centimeters and you were asked to calculate the volume of this pyramid. Well, as we just talked about, uh, the volume of a pyramid, it's, it's related to the volume of a cube, uh, and a cube is a prism, so a cube we would do area of the base times the height. But as discussed, there are three uh, pyramids uh, in a cube. Uh, so to calculate the volume of the pyramid, it's area of the base times the height, but then divided by three. 
So here, to get the area of that square on the bottom, we have to multiply length times width, and the length and the width are the same. So 5 times 5 is 25. That's the area of the base. The height here is 10 centimeters. So we're going to multiply that by the height, and then take that answer and divide it by 3. So we've got 250 divided by 3. And when we calculate that, we get 83 and a third. 83.3. Repeated. Uh, and since we're talking about volume here, uh, volume is measuring the size of a three dimensional shape, so we're going to be measuring that in centimeters cubed. Now, uh, that's the only example I'm going to do for volume of a pyramid. Uh, one thing I want to say about, about this equation, sometimes when you're initially given this equation, it looks like this. Uh, this fry, this, this uh, equation can be written as volume equals one-third area of the base times the height. So sometimes uh, you'll see the equation with a fraction instead of over three. It is the same equation. Uh, really, if we simplify this equation, area of the base times the height, we can write as area of the base times the height over one, and then it's still one times area of the base times the height over three. So sometimes you'll see this equation written like this, a third area of the base times the height, or a third length times width times height, because that's how we get area of the base. I, I usually prefer working with this equation rather than dealing with the, the equation with the fraction. And either equation is acceptable to use. The next thing we're going to talk about with the pyramid is, is the surface area. And uh, just like as, as we've discussed with surface area of, of all our three-dimensional shapes, surface area really just means area of all of the faces added together. And if we look at the faces of a square-based pyramid, what we have is a square on the bottom and then uh, four triangles uh, that, that are connected to that square. And those four triangles are exactly the same size. Um, so what we would have to do here to calculate the the surface area is w we'd need to know the area of the square and we would need to know the area of really just one of the triangles and then we could times it by four because the four triangles are exactly the same well let's start with the area of uh, the the square on the bottom and let's use the same uh, pyramid we used in the last example so the length and the width are both five centimeters so to calculate the area of a square, it's just length times width. So the area of the square is uh, 25 centimeters squared. And I'll just put area with the little s on the bottom there. So that's the area of the square. That's 25 centimeters squared. That should be pretty straightforward. Well, to calculate the area of a triangle, area of a triangle is base times height divided by 2. Now, in the previous example, I said that the height of the pyramid was 10 centimeters. But if you look closely at that shape, you'll notice the height of the pyramid, that's not actually on one of the triangles. That's inside of the pyramid. If I wanted to know the height of the triangle, which is what I need to get the area of the triangle, I'd have to go from the top of the pyramid and to the center of this square. Uh, and this would have to be a right angle here. And it is at the center of the square. there, So that's right in, in the middle of the square. Well, as we talked about in the last video, uh, we talked about how to calc what, that, what that measurement is called, first of all, and how to calculate that measurement. So that measurement there is called the slant height. And the slant height is the height of the triangle that's on the face. To calculate the slant height here, as talked about in, in the last video, we have to use Pythagorean's theorem. And we're going to use Pythagorean's theorem by drawing our right angle triangle here inside of the pyramid. And when we draw that right angle triangle over here, we've got our black side there. 
our green side and our red side, which is our slant height, which is what we want to know. Now, if we plug in the, the values here, well, the black side is the is the height of the pyramid. So that's the 10 centimeters. The green side here, it's from the center of the square to the edge and on the middle of the edge. And, and as discussed in the last video, that's halfway across the square. So that's half of the length, which is 2.5. And now we know, from having watched the last video, that we'd have to use Pythagorean's theorem to figure out the unknown side here. I'm not going to go through all the steps of Pythagorean's theorem. Uh, I'm going to let you go ahead and do that and solve what the unknown side here, what the slant height would have to be. So hopefully you were able to solve that unknown side there, and hopefully you got the same answer as me, which was 10.3. Not much longer than the height uh, of the of the pyramid here, but um, but it is it is a different it is a different length. Uh, so that's the height of our triangle. So remember, the whole point of this was so that we could figure out the surface area because uh, we need to know the area of the triangle to be able to calculate the the surface area here. Well, now we know that slant height is 10.3. So this can get a little bit confusing uh, very quickly because we were just talking about a right angle triangle that's inside of the pyramid. But now we're going to be talking about the triangle that's on the face of the pyramid and the four triangles. And to calculate area of a triangle, it's base times height divided by 2. So 5 times 10.3 divided by 2. So the area of a triangle, or of one of the triangles, is 25.75 centimeters squared. That's what I got when I did area of the uh, when I did base times height divided by two for the triangle on the face of the pyramid here. And remember, that's the area of one of the triangles. Well, now to calculate the total surface area, we have one square on the bottom which is 25 centimeters squared, plus we have four of these triangles. So we have to multiply that area of the one triangle times four. And when we calculate that, we get 128. And we are talking about surface area here. Area is the size of a two-dimensional shape, so we're measuring that in centimeters squared. So that's how we calculate the, the surface area of a pyramid. We need to know the slant height, and we need to know the length of the side so that we can uh, get the area of the base. So we need the area of the square, and we need the area of one of the triangles. Uh, multiply that by four, add those together, and you've got the surface area of your pyramid. So the next thing we're going to talk about is how to calculate the volume and surface area of a cone. Uh, but before we talk about that, we're going to talk about uh, how to calculate the volume of, of a cylinder, uh, which we have already talked about. And so we know that to calculate the volume of a cylinder, we do the area of the base times the height. And on a cylinder, the base has to be the circle. So to calculate the area of a circle, it's pi r squared and that'll give us the area of the base and then we take that area of the base and times it by the height so this is our equation for volume of a cylinder well the relationship between a cone and a cylinder is similar to the relationship between a square based pyramid and a square based prism in that if you uh, were to fill up this cone with water let's say you turn it around and you had a cone shaped cup as long as the radius and the height were the same as the cylinder, uh, it would take three cupfuls of water uh, to fill up this cylinder using this cone. So because we have that relationship, there is a relationship between uh, the volumes. Uh, so basically the, the cylinder has three times the volume uh, of the cone. So uh, if we knew the volume of the cylinder, and again, as long as the height and the radius are the same, 
um, to get the volume of the cone, we would, we would take the volume of the cylinder and divide it by 3. So the equation for volume of a cone is area of the base, so area of the circle on the bottom, so pi r squared, times the height. But then we have to divide that by 3. So this is our equation for volume of a cone. So in order to calculate the volume of a cone, we need to know two pieces of information. We need to know the radius of the circle, and we need to know the height of the cone from the bottom to the top at a right angle. So suppose we have a cone, and the height of the cone is 12 units, and the radius of the circle on the bottom is 5 units. Well, to calculate the volume of that cone, as just discussed, it's area of the base, so area of the circle, which is found by doing pi r squared, times the height, and then divided by 3. So with this uh, cone here, well, pi is 3.14, as always, rounded to 3.14. The radius here is 5, and the height is 12. Now we have to follow order of operations when we're solving this, so we have to do the exponent part of this uh, equation first. So 5 to the power of 2 is 25. So then we have to do 3.14 times 25 times 12, take the answer to that, and divide it by 3. And when we do that, we get 314. I didn't use any units here. Uh, if we had units, like centimeters, for example, for the height and the radius, then whatever units we use for the height and the radius would be cubed for the volume, because the volume is the size of a three-dimensional shape. The next thing we're going to talk about with a cone is the surface area of a cone. And uh, as previously discussed, when we're calculating the surface area, it's the area of all of the sides added together. So when we're looking at a cone, well, first of all, we can see that the bottom is a circle. So that's one of the sides we're definitely going to calculate the area of. So to calculate the area of the circle, we do pi r squared. Now, the rest of the, the sides is really this, this curved part of the cone here. Uh, this is often referred to as the, the lateral area. And the equation to calculate that lateral area is pi times r times s. And the s stands for the slant height of the cone. Uh, so so this, this part of our equation gives us the area of the circle. This part of the equation gives us the lateral area, so th the area of the curved part of the cone. To get the total surface area, we add those together. So in order to calculate the surface area of a cone, we need to know two pieces of information. We need to know the radius, and we need to know the slant height. Now, on this cone, we don't know the slant height. It's not given. So as discussed in the previously, previous video, in order to find that slant height, we have to use Pythagorean's theorem. I'm not going to do that here, but I encourage you to go ahead and give that a shot uh, to try to figure out what that slant height is. So hopefully you were able to do that, and hopefully you found that the slant height is 13 units long. So to calculate the surface area here, it's pi r squared, so pi will round to 3.14. The radius is still 5. And then we're adding uh, the lateral area, which we find by doing pi times radius times the slant height. So uh, once again, we do have to follow order of operations. So we have to answer this exponent part of this equation first. So 5 to the power of 2 is 25. And now continuing to follow order of operations, next I have to do the multiplication. I can do all the multiplication at the same time. So I can multiply these values and multiply all of these values uh, at once before I add. And when we multiply those values, what we find is the area of the circle is 78.5 units squared. The lateral area is 204.1 units squared. So again, to calculate the total surface area, we add those two areas together. And when we do that, we get 282.6. And because we're talking about 
area here, uh, we would be using square units. So again, I didn't use units here, but if these were in centimeters, the surface area would be in centimeters squared. And that's how you calculate the surface area of a cone. So once again, in order to calculate the surface area of a cone, you need to know two things. You need to know the radius, and you need to know the slant height. And initially on this one, we weren't given the slant height, so we had to use Pythagorean's theorem to figure out that the slant height was 13 units long. So in order to finish off our lesson on how to calculate the volume and surface area of a square-based pyramid in a cone, I'm going to ask you to just answer a couple of questions here. So with the first one, we've got a square-based pyramid, and the length is 8 centimeters. So that means the length of one of the, uh, of the square on the bottom is 8 centimeters. And the height of the pyramid, so from the center of the square to the top, is 3 centimeters. So you're asked to calculate the volume. With the information that's given, you can calculate the volume. Um, but in order to calculate the surface area, you're going to have to calculate the slant height first. For question B, you're being asked to calculate the volume of a cone with a diameter of 16 meters and a slant height of 10 meters. And before you can calculate the volume there, you have to figure out what the height of the cone is. Um, I've given enough information to calculate the uh, surface area. You'll have to figure out what the radius is first. Um, but uh, to calculate the volume, you have to use Pythagorean's theorem to figure out what the height of the cone is. If you're able to answer those questions, congratulations. You have a firm understanding of how to calculate volume and surface area of square-based pyramids and cones.